thing I would like to see ever come <coughs> support the Emily Dickinson Museum better. Mm -hmm. um, they draw in at least 10,000 visitors a year these days. And those people eat here, and sleep here sometimes, and shop here. Um, but beyond that, Dickinson's a woman writer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they don't seem to get much of a budget from the college. Yeah. And I think they could use it to, to, uh, to do better programming, to restore the everything. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay, that, that's worth a long discussion, probably. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's true that they don't get a huge amount of uh, money from the college, and I think it was established with the understanding that fundraising would be the source of revenue that would permit the Emily Dickinson Museum to thrive and become more of a draw, even. Um, and I'm not sure that that fundraising has um, achieved what it needs to achieve in order to do what you're asking, and, and I agree with you. It needs, it could be, it has the potential to be uh, a more substantial uh, under, undertaking or enterprise. Should the college step in where fundraising hasn't um, achieved its goals, that would be something we'd have to examine, perhaps. Um, it certainly should be supporting it more uh, in the sense of claiming it. Um, I think that Amherst, this is, these are other aspects of Amherst that people on the outside really don't know. You all do, but a lot of people don't. They have no idea that the Folger Shakespeare Library is part of Amherst College or that the Emily, Emily Dickinson Museum is associated with the college. And at least at that level, we can change how we represent ourselves. But I think um, it's worth discussion. And if you want to want to get one going, um, I'll, I'll be coming to the board meeting, to the next Emily Dickinson Museum board meeting, and I'm sure this issue will arise. <laughs>